Imagine you are walking to school, going about your daily routine. You've done it a hundred times before, except today. Today you stand on a bomb. The blast throws you into the air and you land several meters away. At least part of you does. Your legs are no longer attached to your body. And in that moment, your life changes. The prospect of going shopping with friends, driving a car, and even going to the toilet have changed forever. But what happens next? This is where prosthetic limbs come in. A prosthesis is a device that replaces any bodily function, in this case, a limb. You might start thinking about the different things that you've seen in the movies, or perhaps you're a fan of Strictly Come Dancing and you remember Johnny Peacock with his running blades. They're all pretty different. Some are arms, some are legs. Some are made from wood, metal, and other materials. But they've all got one thing in common. They need a way to attach to the body. And usually, this is done using a prosthetic socket. A socket is basically a bucket that you attach one end of the prosthesis to and stick what's left of the limb into the other end. And this is the part that interests me most. I am a biomedical engineer, which means I look for solutions to medical problems. And I'm currently doing my PhD at Imperial College London with the Centre for Blast Injury Studies. I want to use my interests and skills to help people which is why I've chosen to research a way to improve the quality of life of amputees, specifically those who have lost one or both legs, by improving the design of prosthetic sockets. Let's go back to the beginning of the day we stand on a bomb. This might sound like a pretty unrealistic story to you, but this is something that happens every day to multiple people around the world. Children going to school, or soldiers on patrol. For now, let's follow the journey of an average British soldier, let's call him John, on the day he loses his legs. John is 19 and serving in the British Army, and one day his patrol is cut short because he steps on a bomb. What happens for John next? John is airlifted out of the field within 10 minutes and taken to a nearby airfield for emergency surgery. The surgeons are ready and waiting to perform this incredible life-saving surgery. And many hours later, John comes out of surgery. He's alive and his wounds have been cleaned and tidied, but there's still a long way until John is fully recovered. Later that day, John is transferred back to the United Kingdom where he is staying in the wing specifically for injured military personnel to recover. Unfortunately, John has to have another surgery on his legs to clean out an infection that has developed. And then he continues with his recovery. But this isn't the end of John's treatment. His wounds are healing, he's alive, and he's on the mend physically. But this is just the start of John's rehabilitation journey. John then moves to the residential rehabilitation centre so he can continue his physiotherapy with the hopes of being fitted with, with prosthetic limbs so that he is able to walk again, rather than having to rely on a wheelchair for the rest of his life. The prosthetic fitting process for a prosthetic socket has been nearly the same for over 100 years. Now to put that into perspective, that's before the invention of the ballpoint pen ready sliced bread, post-it notes, and sunglasses. A prosthetist takes a plaster cast of the residual limb and uses it to create a negative, which is the same shape as the limb that is left. The prosthetists then shape this model to make it smooth before using a technique called vacuum forming to pull plastic over it and create the socket. This socket probably needs a bit of changing though, because when the prosthetist takes it to John to try on, it's not very comfortable. It's pinching in places and it's hurting a bit. The process is pretty similar to when you buy a pair of shoes. You slip them on and see if they're comfortable. They seem it, but then you walk up and down the shop to see if they rub. 
A big difference though, is that because of the damage to John's legs, he's had a lot of reconstructive surgery, which means that his skin is delicate and his nerves have been damaged. When he thinks that the socket is comfortable, he tells the prosthetist and the rest of the limb is fitted out with the latest computerized joints. John starts to use his prosthetic limbs to learn to walk again. But a few days later, he has to take his legs off and stop wearing them. He has pressure sores. They're blistered and bleeding. John's legs aren't used to the pressure that's on them, so the limbs have started to break down. The rest of the limb is in perfect condition, but the socket just isn't right. And there's nothing John can do except wait for his wounds to heal. This is the experience of many amputees. It doesn't matter how great the rest of the prosthesis is. If the socket is causing problems, the prosthesis can't be worn. This person is a Paralympic medalist, and he experiences these problems too. He's got really advanced prosthetic running blades, yet when his socket isn't fitting properly, he gets the same issues and can't wear them. Imagine you buy the shoes in the shop. They're made by your favorite designer. They look really cool, and they go with all your outfits but they give you blisters. Would you wear them? I mean, probably. You spent money on them and they look good. Besides, you can wear them for a short while and then take them off. Or perhaps you decide actually that they're more hassle than they're worth and you pick another pair to wear while these live on the shoe rack. But what if these were your only pair of shoes and without them, you couldn't walk? What would you do then? This is the choice that amputees have, to wear legs, which will cause them pain and potentially more damage, or be wheelchair bound. My research is to address this, to provide a solution to sockets that cause damage to the residual limb, but without relying on the feedback from amputees. Due to the damage to the residual limb, many amputees can't feel the way you or I can which means that pressure sores can develop without them knowing, sometimes in just a few hours. And when they take off their prosthesis, there's blood in the socket. I'm also trying to do this as low cost as possible. Personally, I believe that's one of the most important things about what I'm doing. Solutions need to be affordable, not only so our National Health Service can provide it, but also thinking about the wider world so many of the world's amputees are in low and middle income countries where people just can't afford to spend on their own healthcare. I'm using pressure sensors inside the socket to enable prosthetists to see what's happening inside. There are 144 of them arranged in 12 strips of 12 sensors, as you can see in the image. It doesn't rely on what the amputees can feel, but is objective information. The sensors transfer the information to a computer where a 3D model is shown with a color map to show where areas of high and low pressure are. It's being designed to work in real time so that as the prosthetists, sorry, as the amputees walk around, the prosthetists can see the changes in pressure. The prosthetists can then use this information to design individual prosthetic sockets. Prosthetic socket design is a really difficult thing. Not only does the socket have to function as the connection between the body and the prosthesis, but it has to be lightweight, tight enough to stay on, but not too tight so that it causes more injury. And the socket can't be the same for everyone because everyone's injuries are different. And that's because of the cause of injury, the amount of damage to the limb, and every surgery is different. Surgeons use different techniques depending on the circumstances of injury, the resources available, and the training that they have undertaken. And a different combination of all these things for each amputee means that prosthetists have to be really skilled to give amputees the opportunity to learn to walk again. Having people involved in the making of technology is so important because the 
different perspectives need to be heard. What the amputees want compared to the surgeons, compared to the prosthetists, might all be slightly different. There's no point making something that I, as an engineer, think is great, but no one knows how to use, or it doesn't do what's required. I work together with the surgeons who perform the amputation surgery, the prosthetists who design and fit the prostheses, the amputees who wear them, and the physiotherapists who ha help rehabilitate them to find the best possible solution for all. Working with different people allows me to create something that works for as many people as possible by understanding the whole journey from amputation, through rehabilitation, and on into the amputees' lives. One person's best is not always the same as someone else's. Going forward, I want to use the information that we get from the sensors, not only to help clinicians with their treatment, but also to inform the design of prosthetic sockets as a whole. I can use programming and data analysis to find patterns in the data. Perhaps I can find out which surgical techniques lead to the most well-fitting sockets. Or maybe I can see what type of sockets lead to the most pressure sores. This information will allow us to inform policy and best practice, to minimize the development of pressure sores and skin breakdown to improve the lives of amputees around the world. I'm not a medical doctor and I don't treat patients. I am an engineer using my skills to help people. I'm not using the newest, most exciting technology that you might hear about on the news but nor am I creating something that is so expensive that only a few people will benefit from it. The technology that I am creating is low cost and easy to use and is designed to improve the quality of life of the increasing number of amputees around the world by working with those who know most about the issues faced.